Hello everyone, welcome to the Joy of Editing with Dave Dunley. On today's episode, we're going to make this image right here today. A lot of textures on it. Uh, I use Topaz Studio 2. I use Topaz Mask AI, Denoise, Sharpen AI, and also Photoshop. This image was quite a ride. Now this image comes to me from Daniel Charnitsky. I'm going to link his uh, website in the description below. Click on that link and go to his website and look at his images. His Iceland images are amazing. And this image came from his Iceland collection. Really cool image, okay? So it was a lot of fun. Uh, you're going to learn a lot in this uh, tutorial. Uh, so stay tuned the whole way till the end. Uh, this was quite a ride for me. And I enjoyed it. There were some frustrating moments in it, but it was a lot of fun. So... Hey, without any further ado, let's make this image. We're starting out here in Lightroom. Isn't this a really cool old abandoned building? This is really neat looking. So let's go ahead and I always start out by clicking basic and clicking auto and see what Lightroom can give me here. All right, and that looks pretty good. And then I'll just kind of adjust from here. Maybe I'll open up these shadows slightly more. Yeah. Maybe pull my whites back just a tiny little bit because I don't like my whites getting clipped, but everything's good on the histogram here. Let's try the blacks. Yeah, maybe right there. I'm not going to do anything with texture here. I'll wait till I get inside of Topaz Studio 2 for that. And let's check the vibrance. What if we give it more? Eh, not too much. It was pretty good where it was. Uh, in fact, I might even just pull it back a little bit. And that looks pretty good. Now, as far as detail, I'm going to pull back my sharpening the whole way off because I'll use uh, Topaz Sharpen AI to sharpen. I'll keep my noise reduction off because I'll use Denoise AI. This is just part of my workflow. Let's open up Lens Corrections. And I always have checked on Remove Chromatic Aberrations and also Enable Profile Corrections. That's just something I do on every image. And I think we're good to go. I'm going to go ahead and right click this and send it into Photoshop and we'll get started. The first thing we'll do in Photoshop is I'm going to duplicate the background layer and send this up into Topaz Denoise AI. I really love Topaz Denoise AI. It is a fantastic noise reduction software. Okay. And I start out here, I'll shut off the auto update preview. That The reason I do that because every time you move a slider, it's going to try to update itself again. So I'm going to remove noise and remove sharpening. I'm going to save sharpening for Topaz Sharpen AI. Okay, so we're going to zoom into uh, 200% so we can really see the noise. Now I have that split screen view on there. On the left will be the original and the right will be the denoise side. Okay, so... We're going to start by moving the noise up. I usually like to start around 10 and see what kind of results we get. Whoops, I got to check on auto update preview so it will update. Okay, so that looks like it might be a little too much to look over here and here. Let me just start to back it off. Let's try it. Let's try it about an 8 and see what we get. That looks better. I think that's looking good. Let me drag, drag this around. It's going to update every time I move it. Let's look down here on these grasses here. Let's drag this over. Yeah, that looks good. Noise is gone. I might just bump it up to a 9. We'll give it a second to update. Yeah, that looks good. Now all I need to do is click apply and we'll send it right back into Photoshop. I'm just going to run this uh, denoise layer into Sharpen AI. I'm coming up to filter and now we'll launch Sharpen AI and we'll go ahead and sharpen this guy up. See what we need to do here. I'm going to shut off the auto update just like I did in denoise AI. We're going to try sharpen first. I'm going to shut the suppress noise off because I've already uh, denoised it with denoise AI. There's no need to do it twice. Okay, let's turn auto update back on and sharpness is at 50 right now. See what kind of results we get. That looks pretty good. Let's take it up even higher. See what that looks like. Okay, it looks pretty good. I'm going to double click it, get it back to 50. Now I'm going to try stabilize and see. I always like to try all three modes to see which one does the best. Because if there was a little bit of camera shake in there, uh, stabilize will correct any issues like that okay yeah and it'll look artificial and funny if it doesn't need it and it really doesn't need it 
So now I'm going to try focus. And I've had questions. People ask me, how do you know which one to use? And I always say, just try it. If it's not right, it won't look good. If it's right, it will improve it. And you'll say, yeah, that looks really awesome. Now I'm trying the focus mode. This takes care of uh, soft focus images. And, and uh, not really. I don't think that's helping either. So I think the actual sharpen model will do fine with this one. Let me go ahead and bump up the sharpness to uh, 82. I think Daniel has a more steadier hand than I do. Okay. So maybe just a little bit more right around there. And I have the split screen mode on here. So you can see there's the the sharpened side is on the right and the original side is on the left. So yeah, it's definitely improved it right there. Let's go ahead and click apply and we'll get right back into Photoshop. Okay, here we are in Photoshop and I'm thinking, hey, this image looks like something that might look nice with a texture in the sky. Might give it a really cool look. So originally I was thinking of maybe just replacing the sky, but I thought let's go a little artistic with it. So I'm going to duplicate the background layer. I'm going to come up to Filter, and let's go to Topaz Labs, Mask AI, and let's cut out that sky. And, uh, and then we'll add a texture back inside of Photoshop. So let's go ahead and click on Auto Detect Sky and see what it does here. Now there's some water here, and I think I'm going to get rid of that water. So what I'm going to do is just come right along here, paint across here. Get the red brush and paint down in here because I want to get rid of that, I think. I'm going to put a compute on these windows here. So blue is compute, red is cut, and green is keep. This area right in here. And let's go ahead and I'm going to leave it on AI and click compute mask and see what kind of results we get. And here are the results. Uh, on the left is the tri-map image. I'm going to shut off the tri-map by clicking. See where it says show tri-map? Just click right there so we can see the original image. Now I got rid of the water. Let's zoom in here and let's just examine the edges of the image here. And then we can do a little bit of cleanup on here. I'm going to get a red uh, cut brush and just paint right across this little section right here. Clean this up right here. And maybe right there. I know that's a little hill back there, but for what I want to do, I don't really need that, so I want to take that out. I'm going to come across. Everything looks good. I missed a little spot right here. See if we can clean that up right there. That looks good. Let's come around to the edge. Yeah, everything looks good. So all we need to do now is click Apply. And that sends us back into Photoshop with a layer mask on right here. Here we are back in Photoshop. Here's our layer mask that Mask AI has outputted for us. If I option or alt click this, you can see the actual layer mask itself. So what I'm going to do is come to layer one here. And I'm going to come up here to file and come down to place embedded. And what I'm going to do is find a texture that's going to work in there. I'm going to hunt a texture up and then I'll get right back to you. And it'll be sitting right above layer one. Okay, so here we are. I picked this texture out, and it's right here. And the only thing I don't like is this little deal right here. So I'm going to come up to this layer mask, and I'm going to get a nice soft brush here. And what I'm going to do is make sure I'm painting with black paint. I'm going to click right here, and then I'm going to come over to here, and I'm going to hold the Shift key down and click. And then I'm going to come back, and I'm just going to... What I want to do is just clean this up a little bit, just so it blends in nicely, just like that. And maybe over here too, I might click here once and then come over here and shift click. Yeah, just to clean that up, I just think it looks better. And these are the things you have to do when you're editing. You have to make decisions. Do you want to change something? Do you want to fix it? And I think that looks good. And then the only other thing I want to do is zoom in and make sure I didn't cut out any of my building there and there. And I might have messed up right here. So I'm going to make my brush a little bit smaller and just clean this up right here. Okay, and that's looking good. And I, and I like that so far. And the next thing I want to do is 
just to pull this image all together is take the same layer right here. I'm going to duplicate it, Command or Control J. But then what I want to do is pop it above everything. Okay, and right now, all you see is the texture. But I'm going to change that blend mode to Overlay. And isn't that looking cool already? And I want to pull its opacity back a good bit here. Because I just want to marry these two images together. I want that same texture. It's also going to go over the original texture and it's going to, you know, make it a little darker. And I'm just looking for a certain mood here. So I'm just adjusting this opacity until I get it to look kind of how I like it. And I think right there is looking kind of nice. I like that. I went ahead and pulled all these layers together and stamped it up here into this layer 2. So now I'm going to send it into uh, Topaz Studio 2. I'm going to add some more texture inside of Topaz Studio 2. Before I add a texture, you see this little white piece of paper here? It's probably pasted to this building. I'm going to get rid of that. So I'm going to go to the healing brush. It's right down here. Click on healing and make my brush a little bit smaller, somewhere right around there. And just let's just paint right over here. There is a nice healing brush inside of Topaz Studio 2. And voila, that takes care of that. Just click apply. Now for the texture. I found the texture I liked and I added the texture filter. It's this texture called Washed and Worn. It comes uh, loaded with your Topaz Studio 2. And I put it in the overlay blend mode and try different blend modes out because a lot of times they'll really affect how the textures work. And now I'm just going to start to pull the opacity up. And you see that texture start to pop through. And just stop when you get to a point that you like. And then we could come down here and we can adjust the different controls like the contrast and different things like that if we wanted to pop it up more. But I think it looked good. I'm going to double click contrast. I might just pull its detail back a little bit just to soften up the details a little bit. And it's a warm texture. So if I take the saturation to the right, it'll make my image even warmer. But that's too warm. I might just ease off in the saturation just a little bit. Maybe somewhere right around there. Now I think I might ease the texture off the building a little bit. So let's come up to the layer mask here. And let's get a brush. And I'm going to pull the transparency about halfway up to like a gray color. Somewhere around there. And edge where I have shut off. And my radius size is probably good. I'm just going to paint on the building here. And I love how you get the red overlay here which is really nice. So you can see where we've actually painted. I may make my brush a little smaller and maybe get this little section up in here. Just grab the radius slider and pull it a little bit smaller. And we'll just paint off up here a little bit. And yeah, this, this chimney here looks pretty good. I'm just going to leave it the way it is. Okay, so that's looking really nice. Now let me left click the canvas. Here's the before that texture and there's the after. Let me see if I can find another texture that may work. Maybe a border or something like that. I found another texture that I like. So I went ahead and added another texture filter. And I'll, let me go ahead and turn it on and show, you, show it to you. Isn't that cool, the border around here? Let's open up this texture filter. It's called Border Fade 3. Now the borders automatically come in a multiply blend mode because they're light in the center and the darker edges are the parts that are going to show through on the texture, okay? The light parts will not show through in the multiply blend mode. And the other thing I did to it was I took its detail. Let me set it back to the, to the default position right here. See how the edges don't show through as much and there's some texture in here. When I start to pull the detail up, watch how this texture comes through here and the edges really start to pop. So that's where these beautiful controls are great when you're working with textures inside of Topaz Studio 2. After studying this image a little bit, I'm thinking I want this detail in this building to really pop through so our eyes go right to this building here. So I added a precision detail filter. Let me turn it on and show you what I did. Now you notice that a lot more detail popped up in the entire image. I'm only concerned with this building here, okay? So let's go ahead and open this up and I'll show you what I did. Overall small detail, I just pulled it up to 0.27. Overall medium up to 0.19. And now I'm coming to the layer mask itself. And what I want to do is invert the layer mask. And now I want to get a brush and make sure my transparency is the whole way to the right. So I have white paint, so I'll be revealing the detail through. Adjust my radius to a proper size, and I have edge wear turned on. And my softness is at around 50%. And I love that overlay, right? Because it lets you see where you're painting, and that's really nice. I'll paint this section here. 
and then I'll go and paint the rest. But I'll lift off. But watch that. See that detail pop through here there? I'm going to paint right down that chimney. That edge wear is nice. It's grabbing the edges really nicely. Paint down here. Get over these steps. I don't care if I go over that window. It's not going to be a big deal. See that detail pop out? And I got to paint this area in here. Make my radius a little bit smaller. And let's just paint up through here. Across here. And there you go. Our building is complete. All right, let's go ahead and click this eyeball. There's the before. And here's the after. And now our eye is drawn right to that building. And I think that really worked out nice. And let's go ahead and click accept. And that'll send us right back into Photoshop. We're almost done, but I thought this image, it's an abandoned building here, and I love the textures and everything, but what would make it look really cool, I think, is some birds. Birds in abandoned buildings go well. So I just went and get a, got a stock image, and I'll show you right here. It's on this layer right here, and I'll turn it on. And it's just some dark birds against the white background. Now, all I have to do here is change my blend mode from either to either darken, See how the white drops away or multiply. Whoops, sorry, multiply. I'm going to leave it on darken. If I put it on multiply, it gets a little darker. So I'm going to leave it on darken. And uh, that's cool. Now I got birds everywhere. So we can come. I'm going to get my move tool. V is a shortcut for that. And then we could uh, we can move this around. We could transform this or whatever we need to do. But I might just do something like... Uh, let's get those birds off of there. Maybe something like, like this right here. I think that looks pretty good. Now I'm going to do a little trick here. I'm going to steal this mask on this layer right here. The mask I made, Mask AI originally. I'm going to option or alt click the mask and drag it up to this bird layer right here. Now it's the mask is doing the opposite of what I want. It's, uh, it's hiding the birds from the sky. So I'm just going to invert it. Click on the layer mask and it's Command or Control I to invert it and see it'll hide it off the foreground and off the building itself. And then if there were some birds you didn't want in here, you could just click on the layer mask and paint with uh, black paint any birds you didn't want. Like I don't want this bird here, so I'm going to get my brush tool. Make sure my opacity flows at 100%. Make sure I got black paint and I'm just going to paint that bird away. So any bird you don't want, just paint it off. Like this bird here, he doesn't look like he belongs. Let's just have one bird out there. Maybe this bird can go away. This bird here I'll take off. And yeah, that bird's okay there. So here it is without the birds and with the birds. You know, it just it just adds a little bit. And I can even take the opacity and pull those back a little bit if I didn't want them to be quite as strong in there. And I think I might just do that. Take them back to about, oh, I don't know, like 75%. Or how about 84%? I think that looks really good. And I think I might get rid of this bird right here. I think he doesn't look like he belongs. And maybe this bird over here. Decisions, decisions, and there it is. Let me make this a little bit larger. Okay, so there you go. So we came from this image right here which is a really cool image uh, from Iceland. And we ended up with this. I'm happy with it. I think it turned out really nice. Well, it is complete. This image took me on a ride, I gotta tell you. Hey Daniel, thank you for your image. Beautiful abandoned building in uh, from Iceland. And hey, some birds, some textures. I just threw a digital frame on from Topaz to Studio 2 at the end just to add to the artistic quality of the image. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, please give it a like and share it with your friends. If you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe and click that bell notification icon. And then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll be notified. Hey, thanks each and every one for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. I'll see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.